Good evening, Lions, and welcome to our continued uh, Lions Learning webinar series. Tonight, we have a very important topic, uh, perhaps maybe the most important topic of all the ones we've posted is membership retention. i um, very uh, happy to introduce Pastorship Governor Ruth Roberts, who is um, one of our top presenters in our district. She's uh, been doing this uh, countless times and she's very, very good at, uh, at what she does. She is, um, she's presenting this topic. Uh, we, we struggle so hard to get new members every year, but we see members go out the back door and we don't pay enough attention to it. So Ruth is gonna share with us some insight on how we can become a better club and retain our members to serve more. So without further ado, I introduce Pastor Sir Governor Ruth Roberts. Thank you, Pastor Sir Governor Jamie. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Member Retention, How to Keep Them. We are going to ask that you participate in this training session the same as you would if you were in a classroom. And the way that you're gonna be able to do that is by using the icons that are on the bottom of your screen. And the ones in particular I wanna point out is the Q&A box. The Q&A box at the bottom of your screen will allow you to type in a question if you have one. Jamie will be keeping an eye on that and he'll answer them if he can. And, and if it's something that he feels that the whole group needs to hear, then he'll uh, ask me to, to let him share that. The other box that you'll see is chat and that chat box will um, allow you to chat specifically with um, either myself or with Jamie or with both of us. So if you have an opportunity that you wanna share something as we're going along, feel free to use the chat box or the Q&A box. And if you want, you can even verbalize your uh, comment uh, information. And to do that, there's another icon that says raise hand. And when you click on that, we will see who has their hands up and we can then open up your microphone for you and I'll ask you to unmute yourself and then you can go ahead and verbally share with us. So those are the tools that we're gonna to be using today. To start off with, I actually have a poll and I'd like you to just take a moment to answer these three simple questions. It's something that we're asking all of, of the um, attendees for our Lions Learning webinar so that we can get an idea of what we're dealing with from our club size and also what your preferences are. So if you wanna just take a moment to answer those three questions, just click on each one and Okay, I'm gonna end the poll now. And the first question was basically asking if this is your first webinar. And two of you have said yes. So Phil and Sharon in particular, I wanna welcome you both and please feel free to ask questions as we go along. There's no such thing as a dumb question. There's only the question not asked. So feel free. We asked about the size of your club. And we have one that's between 15 and 25 and another one that's over 25. That's great. And our last question is if you uh, preferred in-person or webinars, and we have a split there. Uh, one for prefers in-person and the other one says both. So thank you both very much. We appreciate the fact that you shared that with us. All right, and um, hopefully as we go along, I'm going to share my screen now so that we can share information. And Jamie, I'm just gonna check with you, is that coming up? Yes, that's great, Ruth, that's good. Okay, and I hid my, my bar, so hopefully that'll help. All right. So as we said, we want participation. I'm gonna ask questions. I'm going to ask for feedback. I'm going to ask for your uh, opinions. So please feel free 
to do that with us. And we went through that already. Lende is hoping to join us. Um, he is actually right now involved in training of his own. He's, <clears throat> excuse me, he's actually working with the uh, first vice district governors and training them. So he's kind of busy with his hands full, but he said if he's able to join us later on, he will. And our agenda for tonight is going to uh, deal with the question, what is retention? And we're gonna talk about that in detail. We're also going to talk about why retention is so important. And I think Jamie hit on some of those during the intro. We're also gonna talk about who is responsible for de dealing with retention. You might be surprised at that answer. We're also going to talk about how we can apply the concepts that will help us be successful with retention. And we're going to share resources. So we do have a, a number of different resources available. We're going to make sure that you have uh, an opportunity to, to see what's there. I know we said we we're going to talk about retention. However, I like to use everyday items as analogies. So people can relate to the concepts I'm trying to share with you. So with that in mind, I'm going to start by asking you some questions. You can answer them on your own. Um, you can write them down, the answers, you know, on a piece of paper so that you can refer back to them because we will talk about it a little bit after you've answered the initial questions. And you can share them with us, but only if you want to. So eating establishments commonly known as restaurants. They all have basic requirements. They have licenses, they have equipment, they have staff, um, you know, things like fryers and fridge and dishes and, and with the staff that got cooks and wait staff and cashiers. And obviously they have food and drink, um, tables and chairs, and some of them even have a drive-through. But most important, they have customers. So I want to ask the first question, which restaurants do you avoid? I want you to write down one or two restaurants that you really don't want to go to. After you write down the name of the restaurant, I then want you to put down one or two reasons why you don't like going to that restaurant. Okay. Are any of you willing to share? You can put your hand up if you want to do it verbally, or you can type your answer into either the chat or the Q&A box. You don't have to tell me which restaurant, just tell me why you don't like it. So either in the question pane, question and answer box, or in the chat box. Uh, Phil Neal has his hand raised. Great. Can you free? Uh, let me see. Um, uh, here, I've got it. A lot of talk. Okay, go ahead, Phil. You may. You'll have to unmute yourself first. Uh, the main reason uh, is service. Uh, service in the restaurant would be the reason uh, I wouldn't go back, and the, and also the wait time to get to get served and cleanliness would be number three. Yeah, it uh, you know it's services is, is really a big big issue in that uh, type yeah. of business for sure. I can make or break them. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Okay. I know that to stay in business, we all need to really, you know, deal with different ways of, of dealing with our customers. So if I'm in the restaurant business, I need to do certain things. And if I do them right, then I get to be a restaurant that people want to go to. So think about the restaurants you do want to attend. Write down one or two names of those. And once you have the names written down, Again, put down why you like going to that restaurant. And again, if anybody wants to share, you can type your response into the chat or the Q&A box, 
or you can raise your hand. And hey, go ahead, Phil. Well, basically, just uh, what I said before about the bad restaurants, the, the good restaurants and the most successful restaurants are the ones that have great food to start with and uh, reasonably priced, uh, clean restaurants and very good service. They treat you like your uh, they treat you like your family. Absolutely, and and so you when you go back. into a place like that, it's it's going to make you feel good. And the quality, of it, course, the quality of the food it, it would be number one. That yeah, would, yeah. And then the neatness and everything else. And yeah. Sharon, I'm going to allow you to speak. You'll need to unmute yourself. There's a mute button at the bottom of the screen. It looks like a microphone. You just click on it. There you go. Go ahead, Sharon. Yeah, go. Yeah, I think another one, I mean, it's friendly, but it's personal service, like a one-on-one, -on -one, because I see what you're trying to do is to relate clubs to restaurants. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be friendly and on a one-to-one -one basis. Like talk to the person, like even if you know their first name. Yeah, um, make, them, make them feel really wanted. In, yeah, wanted, included. Great. So I think that's a big part of it as well. I mean, I know that's what works for me. If you know me, the second or third time I've come in, you've got me. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that is so true. So when you when you think of your favorite, you you recognize and probably you recognize those particular skills quicker than you did the ones that you avoid. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay, well, thank you both for sharing. All right. Now, when you think of, of basically these favorites and not so favorites, both of them are in the same business. Both of them are providing service and food to customers but yet they're different and even between the top and the bottom range of your restaurants that you go to there's some in between as well so there's you know your real favorites at the top the ones you avoid at the bottom and there's some in between as well so i guess basically you need to recognize that when we think of our clubs we're the same Yes, we all have members and yes, we have service projects and yes, we have fundraisers, but technically we are still different. And when we think that our clubs are different, different doesn't mean bad, it just means different. One of the sayings is different strokes for different folks. And later on in this session, I'm going to talk a little bit about that particular statement. So different is okay, but you need to recognize that the good places are doing something different than the bad places. So we need to remember that. So now I'm going to ask who is responsible for them not getting good customers or lots of customers or being really successful in the restaurant business? Is it the owner? Is it the cook or the chef? Yes. Is it the wait staff, the dishwasher, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. All three. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All, all, all four categories. All, all three categories. Above. <laughs> You're right. It's any or all of them, and it's usually a combination. It really is. So now I want you to relay that analogy to our clubs. Is it the club president? Is it the membership chair? I mean, that's their job, that's what their title says. And the membership has a committee usually of three people. So is it all three of them? Yeah, all three. And is it the president? Yes. And is it the members? Yes. No, all of them. Yeah, believe it or not, membership growth and retention is a responsibility for every member in the club, and that includes you. Ruth, you so may want to mute, uh, mute the participants because we're getting some feedback. Sorry, could you repeat we're getting, that? We're getting some a background noise. You might want to mute the participants. Oh, okay. 
Phil and Sharon, can you mute yourself, please? And Sharon as well. Good, both. Thank you so much. All right. So, yes, there is a basically a responsibility. And when we talk about the different people being responsible, I'm going to try and put it in a way that might make you understand it a little bit better. When we talk about who is responsible, we're talking about the fact that everything you say and do in your club has an impact. And if you take nothing else away from this particular session today, I'm hoping you're gonna take this concept. You need to remember that you do and say things that are being monitored by the other members in your club. So when you make a suggestion, if when you demonstrate leadership skills, when you help a committee with a particular problem, you're impacting each and every one of them. You're also impacting the people that are just observing around you. Unfortunately, you also impact others when you criticize someone's idea or when you make a cruel joke at someone else's expense. So you need to realize that everything you say and do is either helping or hindering the atmosphere of your club. So you need to think, which one am I doing? The choice is yours every time. And we need to keep that concept in mind that we do have an impact on our club. So my question to the group here is, what is retention? What do you think it is? Sharon or Phil, either one of you, if you wanna unmute yourself and share, what do you think retention is? Go ahead, Phil, unmute yourself first. You're still muted, Phil. Sorry, I thought I hit it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it I think it's making uh, making members feel like they're part of the group, part of the team, and their whatever they say is uh, listened by everybody and taken in by everybody. And like you said before, there's never a, a silly question or a silly statement. So. I think it's uh, listening to all, and uh, and you may get a a, a key. Uh, somebody may have a key point in a in a meeting that uh, you might elaborate on. So I great, that's so making, true. Yeah, making them feel like that they're first of all, even if they're not in a management group, they're still part of the club and part of the team. Right. And there's different ways to do that, you know, just making sure you involve them and listen yeah. to them and all those sort of things. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And I'm just going to drop your hand down. All right. So it's true, you know, what retention really is how you make your members happy and keeping members happy you need them to make sure that they're able to participate. So you wanna keep members involved. You want them involved in your club service activities. You want them involved in the fundraising activities. You wanna keep members informed. And by informed, I'm talking about uh, club decisions, informed about what activities are happening, and also informed about any new information that is coming to the club, whether it's coming from the governor, or from the zone chair, or from a, at Lions International itself, and also keeping members feeling acknowledged. And I'm talking about doing it with appropriate recognition. And when we talk about appropriate recognition, I'm talking about specifics. Sometimes it's a plaque, sometimes it's a thank you card, sometimes it's just a pat on the back. If you're going to say thank you to somebody, please, please be specific. You know, it's not just thank you for helping out at the, at the activity we just did. It's thank you for dealing with that really tough customer that came to the, to the table. 
or thank you so much for you know helping Susan when she had you know some some problems with the cat. Be specific when you say thank you. It really does make a difference. Then they know that you're sincere when you say it. Doing all these things will actually help us keep members coming back. And members coming back is basically retention in action. Ruth, can I just add a comment? Absolutely. Um, it just occurred to me, you know, a few years ago at our centennial, uh, and the expression came out, uh, where there's a need, there's a lion. Uh, when we talk about retention, we can turn that around. Where there's a lion, there's a need. And all those things you put up there are needs. We, we need to be fulfilled. We're, we're spending our time and investing our time. We don't want to do it and feel useless. We want it to be meaningful. So we have to fulfill those needs or else they're not going to stay. Oh, well put. Thank you so much, Jamie. Now, Jamie and I were talking about this earlier. From July 2021 until now in May, we have actually added 79 new lions to our clubs in this district. And that's pretty good. The unfortunate part is we also dropped 100 of our existing members, which means that we have a net loss of 21. So you can see retention is really important. We know that deaths and people that are transferring out are unavoidable. However, think about the impact we could have if we could just save half of that 100, just 50 people, if we could save them from dropping out through retention, through keeping them informed, through keeping them involved, through showing them you know, appreciation. If we did, then our membership would have been a net plus 29 instead of a minus 21. That means we would have 29 more members to help with our service projects and fundraisers. 29 more members to give us new ideas. 29 more members to step up and take office at some point down the road. 29 more members that would be able to spread the good word of lionism and hopefully they bring in new members as well. So each of us as a member, we really do benefit when we bring in more or keep the existing members in our club. By keeping our uh, experienced and knowledgeable lions in the club, that means we have less work to do in dealing with our service projects or our fundraisers. It lightens the, the workload. It also helps our, our club to benefit by having ideas that can be shared. You know, I know a lot of times we hear somebody say, well, no, we've done that before. Well, if somebody has a different way of doing the same thing, let them do it. Our zone and our district benefit by having communities that would be better served if we had those additional 29 people. And all levels benefit by having more members to step up, hold office, and or support the people who are going to run for office. Where to start? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to ask your members, are you happy? And you know what? That's not an easy question to get an answer to. And we don't get it right all the time. Happiness is really a state of mind and it changes based on different influences. Not all members are clear about what they're thinking or how they're feeling. Some are better at sharing this information while others are really hard to read. So what can you do? Well, one of the things that we're gonna talk about is the membership satisfaction guide. And if you want your club secretaries to order it, there's the, the uh, number. And I'm gonna be pasting some of this information into your chat boxes later so you have it. The membership satisfaction guide, it's a 15 page guide that has a three-step process that you can use to help you and your club ensure that your members are gonna have a positive experience. Of the three-step process, the first one is defining satisfaction. And there's a questionnaire that will help you do that. The questionnaire is basically for the members to 
uh, fill it out. And that'll give you an idea of what they're looking for in satisfaction. The good news is, is they even have a questionnaire for those who have already left the club. And sometimes it's good to go back to those people and ask them why they left. And to get them to fill out the questionnaire will give you some more information. There's usually five reasons, five basic reasons why people leave Lions Clubs. Unproductive meetings, personal reasons, membership issues, club culture, and service. So with step two, you're basically creating a satisfaction plan. And step two will actually um, help you look at the five areas of why members leave and they actually have suggestions for each of those areas. So that will help you plan what you need to do. Some things you may already be doing, some things might be brand new to you. Then the step three is to actually implement and then review. Implementing it sometimes takes time. Some things you can do right away. Other things need to be worked into uh, the year. So it might take a bit of time. Therefore, you need to review on a regular basis to see where you need to adapt. Oops, one too quick. There we go. There is, um, and we're very fortunate, both at LCI, MDA, and A12 websites, there's tons of information that we should all be aware of so we can take advantage of them. Again, this link I'm going to put in the chat box for you so that you have it. And it's someplace you can go where it has a number of different documents that you can use to help you improve your club. And I'm gonna talk just about a couple of them. How are your ratings is one of them. And this particular document is really great. It has a questionnaire for your club members to fill out. And the first half of the questionnaire basically is asking what your expectations are of your club on certain issues. Then the second half is what is your uh, perceived view as to how your club are meeting those expectations. Then the administrative guide that I'm referring to here on the screen actually has a um, a spreadsheet that you can download from Lines International and put in the information from the, from the uh, questionnaires and it will then show you where the gaps are. So, you know, your, your members are expecting this, but you're failing in it or your members aren't as interested in it, but it's okay because you're doing all right in it. So you'll see the gaps and you'll see where you need to actually start to focus your energy and your, your work. It's a great tool. I've seen it in use. So resources. The first two I've already talked about, the membership satisfaction guide and how are your ratings. The third one is called Your Club, Your Way. And this is something I were sort of referenced to at the very beginning. You know, at one time, if you missed three meetings in a row, you got kicked out of Lions. Well, Lions International has smartened up and they realize we are a different world today. We are different in, in how we spend our discretionary time and clubs just can't operate the way they used to. So they've given us a wider opportunity of making our club our way so that we're comfortable with it. And this particular document, it'll look at things of your tradition, what traditions you, you do and are you still satisfied with them? Is this what your club really wants? It'll also look at your meeting place. This is the sort of thing you want. Um, maybe you're having dinner meetings and your members really want a breakfast meeting, or maybe there's people that can't come to the meetings because they're stairs and they're, they're using a walker. So it's just something to help you, again, look at what's happening within your club to see if you need to make any changes. Because we really do want you to have your club your way. And, you know, a lot of times especially with today's technology and, and what we're doing tonight is a good example. At one time, the only way that you would have gotten any training would have been to jump in your car and drive, depending on where you are, could be minutes or miles or hours 
to get to someplace for training. Now with Zoom, we're able to provide that training and you can stay in your home. And you may even be wearing your pajamas for all I know. The thing is, we are adapting to today's world. We're doing the best we can to make it easy for our clubs to meet the way they want to meet. And if you're shy on projects for your club, you don't know what you need to do, or you're not sure what, what needs are really needed in your community, the community needs assessment is an ideal tool for that. It actually has sample letters already written that you can send out to key people in your community, be it the mayor or counselors or uh, the police department or the, you know, the health units and ask them what they feel that the club is doing that helps them or what's missing, what sort of things they think we should be doing. So the community needs assessment is a, is a really great tool if you're looking for projects. So all of these tools are available. And I mentioned that I'm gonna copy them into the chat. And I just want to quickly review our agenda, what we've talked about. We talked about retention. We talked about why it's important because we saw the numbers. We found out that we're all responsible. We need to, to recognize that what we say and do while we're working with our lions has an impact. And, and we need to control that. We also uh, need to apply the concepts and that's you know, making our members happy different ways, involving them, getting them busy with our service work and our, our fundraisers. Um, you know, just basically being uh, appreciative of them when they do do things. And also we said we were going to give you some resources so those are the things that we talked about. We also have upcoming webinars. As you can see on June 2nd, it's going to be diversity. On June 9th, it's going to be accessibility. This is a really new one and it's probably uh, an important one that you should talk to your club about because there are some changes that are coming about, especially for clubs that uh, have their own meeting place. So it's going to be a really interesting one. We have some, some outside guests coming to that one and for the diversity one as well. And then on the 16th, orientation. So if you have some new members or you have some long-term members that aren't as knowledgeable about Lions as you would like them to be, orientation would be a great time for them to come. Then those were all webinars. The in-person training, we are actually holding uh, in two different locations. For treasurers and secretaries, it's going to be June 4th, and it's going to be at the Tiny Community Center. And it's going to go from 9 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. And we will be using the internet so that they can actually see us using my LCI live. And there's going to be president's training on June the 18th, and that's going to be held in Alliston. And that's going to go from 9 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. So as you can see, we've got a pretty busy time coming up. So I'm going to now ask if there are any questions, comments, concerns. And if there isn't, then I'm going to um, copy that material for you. And I, have, I have a comment and sure. just something, uh, just an idea to, to get members engaged. Uh, a number of years ago at my former club, Bradford Lions Club, um, then President uh, Debbie Herenic came up with the idea of inviting members, um, you know, at each meeting, it'd be a different member, to come and present their bio. You know, we work for years in service with some lions, and sometimes we don't even know what they do for a living. We don't know much about their personal lives at all. And uh, I found it very enlightening um, when a lion, you know, would spend five minutes and just tell us the Reader's Digest version of their life and, and how they came to be in, in the community they live and, and where they are with their work, whether they're retired. And you feel you, you know the person that much better and that much easier to engage with them. So that's something that clubs should probably consider. It doesn't need to be at every meeting. It could be every second meeting, but it's a way of getting better acquainted with uh, um, with
with our members. Obviously in smaller communities, it's probably not necessary because everybody knows everybody in the town, but in bigger communities, not so much. Um, so it's a, another tactic, if you will, or, or an idea to uh, get members engaged and get to understand them better. And that I agree with you, Jamie. I know that um, the comments that both Sharon and Phil made about wanting to make sure people felt one-on-one uh, -on -one and included, that's one of the ways to do that, you know, is, is to ask them else. Sharon, go ahead, uh, unmute yourself first. Okay, there I am. Um, no, I've, I've been in two small clubs, Bala and Gravenhurst, and um, even though they're small towns, you still don't know how the people got there. And I mean, it's amazing, even though it's a small town, what their history was and how they ended up where they are today in, in your club, you know, because you don't think to ask, well, where, how did you get here? you know and it's it's fascinating i mean we as i said we've done it in bal and we've done it in gravenhurst and uh it's really really interesting it's like i didn't know that about you you know <laughs> so it's a, it's a fantastic idea and it's a great tool to really in, engage and, and make people feel i think more wanted i guess you know like wow they were interested in me so you no know, it's a great idea and I guess another uh, another comment I have to make, like one <laughs> issue our club is facing now, because we've lost so many members more to death than, than anything, unfortunately, but um, we meet in a restaurant. So she would close off a room which has about a 30, um, uh, 30 uh, capacity, you know, for, for um, customers. Well, we're down to like nine people now from actual meetings and uh she approached me the other day well number one was she has to open her patio which increases her capacity and the the washrooms main washrooms are downstairs she cannot close off the room for us now which is totally totally understandable mm -hmm. so <laughs> we're without a meeting place right now oh. unless we, i said unless we can find a big telephone booth somewhere you know <laughs> so it, oh, yeah. it, it's Sorry, Jamie, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say a lot of clubs, it doesn't always have to be a meal. Um, oh, no. You know, no. A lot of clubs are, some clubs are doing, you know, one meeting is just a business meeting, and then maybe the next meeting is a social and, and skip the meal uh, and have it like a meeting, kind of a quick business and a, a social uh, with the meal. So um, yeah, that makes it a little, little easier, uh, but it's it hard does, when you I mean, have a yeah. meeting. We have a room now where we can meet. I mean, but if somebody wants to bring food, that's fine, you know. But we've decided well, for the, our two meetings, well, last week and our next one, we'll meet there. And then for, you know, our awards night, the end of June, we will go back to the restaurant where we meet just to support her. But we will have already done all our... Um, you know, awards night and uh, installation of officers. We're going to do that at the next meeting at this small room. So, you know, it'll work. Come yeah. September, I don't know, but we'll worry about that over the summer. So, but, you know, meeting places, as I said, or when, especially when you're in a small town, become an issue as well. But, uh, you know, you just got to be innovative, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. Adaptable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And going back to your comment about, you know, asking people how they got there. I know one of the clubs that I used to visit um, every once in a while, they would, uh, they would pick a member at random, the president would, and ask them to share something with the rest of the group that we wouldn't know. So it was something that was totally surprising to most of the people. And, and some of the things that they came up with were just really shocking. <laughs> You know, people that you didn't think would be uh, dancers, uh, you know, teaching dancing did and, and things like that. It was it was really quite, uh, quite amazing. Yeah, it's like a, it's very similar to a congregation, a church. You, you meet every week, but you really sometimes don't even know the, the members of the church you, until you have a social. I was going to say uh, in Barrie, we, uh, we have our own club, which is nice. But uh, we also have other clubs coming. We had other, we had uh, 
we had cold water come uh, last Tuesday, this this past this week on Tuesday, and you get ideas from other clubs, and they do uh, they do it that duck race in uh, cold water, which is very successful. They sell tickets on the on the ducks. Of course, we all bought tickets, but so you know that was a good reason why they came. We all bought tickets. Uh, but you get you get great ideas, and also we we had a fellow come from. Uh, he's doing a cancer uh, cancer fundraiser out of Cookstown, and uh, very interesting man. He has cancer himself. He's been fighting it twice, and he has some great ideas. And he, he did it all himself. And he's we're helping him with his uh, the parking, and he's got uh, he's got the fairgrounds in Cookstown. He's having a classic car. And he's talked to all the classic car. He's got people coming from Sudbury. It's a great idea. And he's going to raffle. And everything that he's raffling was donated. And even the tickets that he sold are all donated. So they, these clubs do a fantastic job, I find. So Great. Yeah. 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 So in Barry, it's just a question of the older people, uh, you know, are not... They're not as feisty as, as they used to be, I guess. And it's they get they get into one position, do one thing, whether it be bingo or uh, you know they might do uh, they come out and help on 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 fundraisers like open open their Dunlop Street, but they kind of only want to do one thing, and uh, it's kind of hard to broaden them out into different things like uh, doing other things like clean up. We do clean ups of parks and. Uh, we cleaned up our hall. We have the hall in uh, in Barium. Also, we have a the Lion House, as I think you're aware. So well, that's a perfect. Yeah. So, if I mean, that's a perfect opportunity for a community needs assessment. I mean, Barry's a yeah. well, one of the older clubs in the district, and yeah, and um, you know, sometimes it, it's it's healthy just to ask four or five pointed questions of leaders in your community, and you might be surprised that there's a real easy service project. Yeah. It's just waiting for their for for a Lions Club to pick it up to do and and when you do that service project, you'd be surprised at the new members you might attract because yeah. you're doing meaningful service in the community. So um, the community needs assessment is a is a one, uh, yeah. one of the most underutilized tools that, you know, that Lions Clubs International offers, and uh, yeah. I strongly recommend it because sometimes and I was in a in an older club that was very much like that, did, did the same thing over and over again. <clears throat> you need to do uh, a reevaluation probably every four or five years just to make yeah. sure. And you may not have to change anything. You may get the answer might be that you're doing exactly what you need to be, do, be doing. But um, to grow and be relevant uh, and current, you need to do this from time to time yeah. uh, to better serve your community and attract new members. Yeah, and with the last two members we we have came from uh, through the website through uh, Lions International. People that have belonged to other clubs. Uh, one I think was from overseas. He came to Canada and joined right away. So, and we're and we're talking about retention, and you know, and that's why some members leave too because they they join Lions because they want us to help their community and. If clubs aren't doing meaningful service, yeah, we're asking themselves, why am I here? Yeah, they may like the people and everything else, but why waste my time when I'm not doing anything? I yeah. can do. I can join another club. Maybe I join Rotary, and yeah. uh, I get more about you know about for my time and more yeah, gratification. Exactly. Yeah. Great, uh, Sharon, Phil, and Jamie. Are there any other questions, comments that you would like to share? I think you covered it. You covered it very well. Well, thank you again, Ruth, for another excellent presentation. Uh, as suggested, this program has been recorded, and it will be available on our District 812 YouTube channel, uh, along with all the other webinars that we've had for for future viewing. Where Where are you, Ruth? Where? Victoria Harbor. Victoria Harbor. Oh, yeah, I used to call it the Foodland for years there. Well, I know that um, 
you know, preparing for this particular uh, webinar, because I'm like Jamie, I feel like it's so important. And yet I'm trying to figure out the best way to deliver it so that people yeah. really do understand the importance of it. Well, I think you did an excellent job. I would. I just wish people. You know, everybody's excited when you know we we get a new member and it's a big deal and we make a. You know, um, sometimes we're having two or three members. I remember a couple of years ago we inducted eight new members in Dorset, and that was phenomenal. It was uh, it was really exciting um, to see you know a new, a new lion's journey of service, but we make such a big deal of that, but. We just let members fade to black when we just could have spent a little extra time and help them be, you know, gratified and, and feel like their journey was worthwhile. And we work so hard to get new members, but we just get our soul lax and keeping our own members happy. Makes no sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping you take advantage of the resources that we shared because I really do think, you know, how are your ratings and uh, my your club my way and all of those are really really good materials to help a club improve. And all the information is in your chat box right now. If you want to copy it to a document or you can look it up in your one of your folders wherever your chat messages go to. Okay. Thank you. And if there's other people you think should listen to this particular project, make sure that you tell them to go to YouTube, the A12 Lions uh, District YouTube channel. Okay. And just go to YouTube and, and type in District A12 Lions and it'll come up. We're still recording, Ruth. Yes, I'll stop the recording. Thank you.